In our next video, talking about the properties of materials, we're going to talk about what we call the bulk modulus. So we'll talk about just the basics of that. The definition of the bulk modulus, we use the letter B to indicate bulk modulus, is the ratio of the bulk stress divided by the bulk strain. And remember again, stress is always defined as force divided by area, which is kind of the same as the pressure. So how much pressure you apply to material. Now in the case of the bulk, uh, the bulk modulus, it makes a lot of sense to talk about pressure because here we're taking a material like this let's say that the dotted lines were the original volume of the material you apply a certain amount of force on the material and of course that force is divided over the surface area of the material which in other words a certain amount of pressure of the material and you will cause the material to shrink in volume it changes in size as far as the volume is concerned and we call that the strain so the definition of the bulk strain is a change in volume divided by the original volume. So this can then be defined as force divided by area divided by the change in the volume over the original volume. But we're going to place a negative sign in that on that because whenever we apply pressure into a material, the volume actually shrinks. So the change is a negative change. It becomes smaller. So therefore, we put the negative there to make it a little bit easier to understand. So the more force you apply, or the more pressure you apply, the more you shrink the size of the or, the or the volume of the material, which makes sense because, again, as you apply pressure on, pressure on a material, the molecules in the material, they push back, they don't want to be any closer together, so it's a constant fight between the repulsive force of the electrons in the material and the pressure applied to the material. The more pressure, the more you squeeze the, the uh, electrons closer together. It's kind of like pushing a spring together, same kind of principle. All right, now the bulk modulus that we use for that is simply how much pressure is required to achieve a certain volume change. So the greater the number, the more pressure you need, the more force per unit area you need to achieve the same volume change. So for example, for iron, you will need almost twice as much pressure uh, than you would need for aluminum to achieve the same volume change. So iron resists the change in volume much more so, almost twice as much, as aluminum does. And then of course if you compare it to lead, then iron requires more than three times as much force or, or pressure to change, give the same volume change as compared to lead. Now sometimes it makes a lot of sense to talk about compressibility of a material, which is actually the inverse of the bulk modulus. So if we take the bulk modulus, take the inverse, then we get what we call the compressibility. And we'll see in just a moment what that means. So in this case, for iron, if we calculate the compressibility for iron, typically we use compressibilities for liquids, but just as a comparison, for comparison's sake, let's do it for iron. We get 7.12 times 10 to the minus 12, of course, that would be the inverse of Pascal's. It's a very small number. Now, if we take a look at the compressibility, let's say, of a liquid like water or ethyl alcohol, notice that the compressibilities are much greater for water than they are for iron and much greater for ethyl alcohol even than it is for water. The bigger the number for compressibility, the easier it becomes to compress. So that's why if you take the compressibility for lead, you would get a bigger number than you would for iron and therefore lead is easier to compress. So that's another way to look at it. Now, can we kind of get a feel for how that change can be interpreted or how those compressibility numbers can be interpreted? So let's take a look at the bulk stress uh, and the bulk strain and put those in the equation for bulk modulus. So we can say that bulk modulus is equal to force over area divided by the negative of the change in the volume over the original volume. Now I'm going to rewrite this by saying that bulk modulus is equal to force divided by area times the inverse of that, which would be the original volume divided by the change in the volume. And of course, we want a negative in there, so I'll just put the negative up there so we don't forget about it. Now, notice that force divided by area really is pressure. So we can write that the bulk modulus is equal to negative pressure times the ratio of the initial volume divided by the change in the volume. Now, if we solve that equation for compressibility, I'm going to move over here now, give myself a little bit more room. So we can now say that the compressibility is equal to 1 over the bulk modulus. All right, so if we then take the inverse of that, notice we get negative the change in the volume in the numerator divided by the pressure and the original volume, volume initial. So the compressibility, in a way, is a measure of how much the volume would change 
as a percentage, in a way, of the original volume and also, of course, as a function of pressure. So for a given amount of pressure, we expect a certain amount of volume change. So the bigger this number, the bigger we expect the volume change to be, the more the material will be compressed. Now notice, these compressibility numbers are actually still very, very, very tiny numbers, which means these materials do not compress a lot, and you can push on a piece of metal, and you're not going to see the change in the volume. And the same with water, you can push down on some water, maybe with a piston, and you're not going to see much of a volume change. The only time that you see a appreciable amount of volume changes when the pressures get to be really high. We'll show you some examples in the next videos. But hopefully at this point you get a pretty good feel for what we mean by, first of all, the bulk modulus, which is simply pressure divided by the change in volume of the original volume. In other words, if we apply a certain amount of pressure to the material, we expect a certain amount of volume change as a function of its original volume. We can see that the numbers indicate that the bigger the number for the bulk modulus, the more difficult it is to compress the material. Then we have a term called compressibility, which is the inverse of the bulk modules, which gives us a number that if it's bigger, it means it's more compressible. If it's smaller, it's less compressible. Again, it gives us a feel for how much force is required, how much pressure required to achieve a certain amount of volume change. And when we show you some examples, this will come a lot clearer to you. But at least I want you to have a basic understanding of the bulk modulus and of the compressibility constant and now we'll show you some examples of how to actually calculate how much the volume changes when you apply a certain amount of pressure to a material.